Bill Swope, and I want to tell you about one of the most exciting cars that Swope's Cars of Yesteryear Museum has ever had to offer. This is a classic 1964 Chrysler 300K. This collection was, uh, was a passion of my father and my mother, really. In what I would say was the last third of his life, of course, my father was the automobile dealer that I grew up with, and uh, he's the man that taught me everything I know about the business I'm in today. But really, growing up, he only had one car that you would consider a, a vintage car, and it was a, an old Dodge that, quite frankly, he, he bought before he, he had me. I'm fond of saying there's no retiring in the car business, but as he started to step away from, from day to day, and this would be the mid-80s, he started collecting cars. <laughs> and uh, he did that uh, very uh, effectively, I would say, but also very passionately. Uh, he was very picky about what came into the Swope's Cars of Yesteryear collection. But uh, over the years, uh, uh, he, he collected some pretty fine automobiles. There's uh, some very unique automobiles in this collection. Dad was particular about what, what he wanted to put in the museum. You know, his vision was cars that, uh, that had a story. And uh, of course, his passion was Packards. He has more Packards in the museum than, than any other uh, single make. But uh, yeah, it, it, it wasn't just any old car that came along that would qualify in his mind for a piece in the museum. Dad uh, loved telling the story of one car here. Well, no, he loved telling the story of every car here. But I remember him telling me one day there's a Rolls Royce up in Shelby County, Kentucky that I would really like to get my hands on. And it belongs to a lady that um, uh, has had the car in her family uh, pretty much her entire life. And the story is this. Back in 1939, this lady and her sister, actually back in the 30s, they, they were living in Chicago and they were young girls, but they were orphaned and they found they had a family in Great Britain. And so they were taken in by their family in Great Britain, uh, the Marquis of Huntley. So they went from being orphans in Chicago to living the life of gentry in England. And in 1939, the Marquis decided that his son should take these young girls on a tour of Europe. So they traded in a 1914 Silver Ghost, which we wish we had to this day. It was a, that's an iconic old Rolls Royce, but they bought a 1939 Rolls Royce Wraith so that they could go on a tour of the continent of Europe with these young ladies and and they did. And they toured Austria, and they toured Vienna, and they went to the uh, music festivals, and they actually came into contact with Adolf Hitler and his crew in several places. But in 1939, if you remember your history, towards uh, later in the summer, things started to turn in Europe, and they were in Europe in this car. They made it out. It got back to Great Britain. The girls grew up, she migrated, Midge Wagner is the one that dad acquired the car from, migrated back to the States and they lived in Florida. They used the car throughout the, the 40s, 50s and 60s and then she uh, ended up in a saddlebred farm in Shelby County, Kentucky and that's where dad learned about this car. And it's in the collection and the history is all documented. and. Uh, it's just, a, it's just a fascinating story. That is an example of stories that exist on really all these cars, maybe not quite that, uh, that uh, uh, historic, but uh, every car has a story. One of the things that I'm painfully aware of is that when we lost Dad, we lost an awful lot of institutional knowledge about this collection. And, um, you know, my brother Bob and I, I think, uh, take very seriously um, the task of trying to, to not just remember but see what kind of documentation there is and go back and, 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 to, and not develop but, uh, but uh, contain as much of that institutional knowledge as we can. One of the things that he looked for 
and was uh, focused on. Uh, first of all, this collection is by and large original cars. They're not modified in any way. It's, it, there's a whole genre out there of hot rods and so forth, and they, you know, they have their unique uh, groups and so forth. Dad was looking for originals, and what he really liked was an unrestored original. So there are a few examples of cars in here, and, and primarily he was focused on pre-war vintage cars. So we're talking about, you know, the industry kind of shut down around uh, during wartime, Second World War we're talking about. So these are cars from the 20s and 30s and even the teens. And there are several in here that are original, unrestored cars, and uh, they're museum quality. And, uh, there's one uh, that's been in the museum and probably will always be here if someone comes to visit. It's a 1928 Packard. It's a car that uh, he acquired very early in that, in that uh, time frame when he really got engaged in it and uh, he was so excited about that car. I'll remember it. Uh, I remember the night it arrived and, and came off the truck and uh, um, he says, you know, that's the air that Packard put in those tires in 1927. So, <laughs> so it's, I think those are some of the special cars. And let me, let me show you the interior of this car, which is original. Uh, this automobile has been restored where needed, but largely what you're looking at is an original 1957 Buick Super two-door hardtop. It, it does amaze me. We, we are a free museum. Dad always wanted this to be a gift to the, to the public. So we don't advertise a lot. I'm very glad that WKU is doing this. Um, uh, we, uh, we exist primarily by word of mouth. Uh, we have a lot of loyal visitors and every, we keep a, a log of those that come and where they come from. And every year we have people that visit from every state uh, in the United States, but also from around the world. Uh, because it's primarily people that uh, uh, in the community that bring visitors here. So the legacy is is really their passion for for uh, these cars. Um, it is our intent to keep it going uh, well into the future and, and hopefully forever and always to keep it uh, a free museum and dad's gift to the public. <laughs>